Hi everyone. <laughs> oh, oh you, you, you've already, it's already running, I didn't know. No, I got you on that. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hi, Dirk. How are you? I'm good, I'm good. Yeah, so, hey, you're teaching on the end times right now. Yes, yeah. every and, uh, and you Tuesday pro- night. You're producing yeah. these great handouts. It just didn't have a color printer or whatever, but like... Wow, you, so much work you put into, into oh, that. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Something that can travel, something we can hopefully um, get out there a little bit more. Yeah. And, uh, but there are about um, 20, 25 of those that uh, some are on Zoom and some are in person. And we're getting through in some person. of the key concepts just to get yeah. a good idea about what, what's the debate all about. Why do you think, you know, it's worth studying? Is it worth studying? Well, the end times? it's in the Bible. So a lot of people yeah. sort of say, um, you know, well, what are these passages about? And are they for something future or has yeah, it been fulfilled? Yeah. yeah. You know, um, there's, a, there's a thought here that uh, even Jesus was sort of saying to the people in Israel that they should have known the Bible because all yeah. of this was going to happen. And yeah. you were totally oblivious to the fact that I'm here. Like, yeah, you know, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, prophecy, I can get that like, you know, is it in Matthew, you know, this and this will happen. When you see that happening, leave the city mm. and go for the hills. Like, mm. you know, this is going to be war and stuff is happening. And um, so their prophecy warns you and helps you to chart your course, whatever. But in end, end times, oh, and then, then people, of course, interpret, you know, oh, that, you know, that already was fulfilled when yeah. Jerusalem destroyed and was yeah. 70 AD, yeah. like 40 years after Jesus yeah. died, and some say, no, that's in the future. Like, well, what's the point of it for, for that's us actually, now? That's actually the, uh, that's the b- debate. Yeah. Because uh, the one group that says everything has been fulfilled exactly the way that Jesus said, yeah. and even uh, when you look at Revelation and Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, and, and yeah, you know, yeah. the whole lot is actually talking about something that happened from Jesus' proclamation of the destruction and yeah. you know no stone will be you know uh, left on you know so basically uh israel the temple in ruins people scattered the whole uh kingdom if you like the religious kingdom as well as the political yeah. kingdom of israel will be destroyed but right? in, in a way like you know if that was the case you know it basically happened at that time yeah. Then the prophecy makes sense because it actually all the churches were warned. Yep. It actually meant something that the Christians living then, okay, when all of that happens, no, this is tribulation time. And that's so, what um, the historical group or those who say has yeah. actually already been fulfilled. Yeah. They say, look, uh, we can identify all of these things being fulfilled in that time. So yeah. that generation, remember, yeah. there's a big thing about, you know, that generation that will see this happen, will see all yeah. fulfilled. Yeah. Yeah. And they say, well, that generation saw it all fulfilled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then the futurist idea, or in terms of there will be a time when all of this will will come to pass, or and and God will come back, and or Christ will come back and set up His thousand year reign, and and the tribulation period, and all of these things. They are looking for signs and markers and and dates to say yeah. ah, that's when it's going to happen. Yeah. Then we're going to go into the tribulation. Then Jesus comes for his bride. Then, then uh, he will come back with the saints and set up the thousand year reign. And, and a lot of that kind of stuff is all about anticipating something. So one of the interesting things is that uh, I think you and I have often talked about too, is that scripture is full of typology. Yeah, you know, yeah. that you can actually that, that see is something. A big word. Yeah. So that means that uh, basically what it means is that uh, the same thing can happen on several times. Of course. So and prophecy is not just the, once. The bowls of wrath, for instance, yeah. like, you know, God judging the world. And, you know, Revelation gives us a bit of an inside picture of what ha- happens in heaven. I mean, that's happened over the last 2,000 years again yeah. and again. Like First World War, Second World War. Of course, a few things got poured out yeah. there. And then the season changes again and there's yeah. a bit of renewal happening and, you know, there's a yeah. season of peace, and yeah. uh, but it's it's like in the Bible, isn't it? I think the the biggest cycle is always in the the book of Judges. Like you know, God raises a judge, a leader, basically charismatic leader of the people. Everything goes well. Everyone turns to the Lord. Then then they're rescued and they're comfortable. They fall away from God. <laughs> then God comes and judges them. Then they're under oppression. They cry out in pain. Then God comes in, gives them a leader restores it and you know that cycle and we live that out now isn't it yeah so actually when you think about what we just said about has it been fulfilled or is it yet to be fulfilled 
a lot of those that are looking for those signs are saying when will the seals be open you're talking about yeah, 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 the, yeah, the, the bowls seals, the trumpets yeah, yeah. the seals right yeah, and, and, and yeah. if you go into revelation uh and you see that passage there about when will the seals be open who's worthy to open yeah, up yeah, the seals yeah. right but it gives you a very important reference as to who is worthy to open up the seals yeah. and it's the lamb that was slain yeah, jesus so that was already 2,000 years ago yeah. that the seals were open because yeah. the land that was slain is actually opening yeah, up yeah, the seals. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you can actually look at it in that way that, you know, this cyclical stuff yeah. is going to happen yeah. and every generation will see... So we're very diplomat diplomatic. We say both. You know, did it happen in the past and is it still going to happen? Both. Well, <laughs> it's, it is a bit like that. It is, no, but and, it and is you know, a bit like it's that. It's pretty smart to be diplomatic as ministers because, like... I think, you know, the first sermon that I preached on the rapture, that's years ago, I, I lost immediately a church member. Like, oh. I'm not going to attend a church where you don't believe in the rapture or anything yeah. like that. And so people can get so uptight about yeah. the end times. Yeah, yeah. Did you find that as well oh. in your course? Yes. Like, oh, it got to be that way. Because, you know, the funny thing is that every time it's like, you know, Thank you for all of that teaching. Now, but what's your position on this? Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, no what's know. your position? Where, where's, where's your yeah. camp? You know, it's like, yeah, which yeah. one are you going to go for? Do I have to fight you? <laughs> and, and I just think that, you know, the best way to look at end times is that, yes, God is true in his word back in Jesus' day, in every generation, in my generation. Yes. And there will be a generation when finally God says, okay, that's yeah. finished now because yeah. we know that, uh, say, for instance, in the uh, book of Revelation, there will be a time when there's new heaven, new earth, yeah. new everything, and the old is gone. Literally, Satan and sin and evil will be gone. And God begins something that we have no reference to because yes. all our life is under the sin and yeah. the devil yeah. and yeah. destruction. Yeah. And like I, I like the whole concept of end times. It's, it's basically God's idea. This world is just finishing up. Yeah. This is and like to me, it's a comforting thought because, like, you, you don't want hey God saying, hey, this earth is great the way it is right now. It's going to be a permanent place where there are wars and rumors of wars and injustices and whatever. No, guys, it's the end times and I'm coming soon. And that means that this is actually temporary. Yes. The world it's is temporary. temporary. Exactly. But in this moment that is temporary, this waiting until that it, fullness it, yeah, of everything yeah, yeah, else, yeah, yeah. we have a job to do. Yes. And I think sometimes we forget, it's almost like, you know, oh, well, if Jesus is going to come back, I'm just going to sit and wait until he comes. Yeah. But no, no, no. When Jesus actually finished everything, he actually gave the disciples a word. I yes. think that is actually the word that we need to take on yeah, yeah. ourselves again. While we are breathing, while we're yeah, yeah. in this side, yeah. there is a word. Oh, where is that? Uh, uh, end of Matthew. Matthew 20. How many 20, chapters 20, does Matthew have? 28. 28, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and the Great Commission. <laughs> yeah. You know, and he talks about now all authority has been given to him. Yes. So it's not I'm about a fight anymore, about yes. authority. Yeah. No, he's got it all. Yeah. And so go tell everybody because I want you all to he's, be in this. He said, disciple nations. Yeah. So that's hopeful. Yeah. I mean, that's a positive view towards the future because, you know, I think when I was a child that's a long time ago that among some of the christians there was this and you know they came into our home as well and they had all these charts they lived with the view that in the end times things will get worse and worse and worse and worse and just before it gets really bad we get raptured you know the church escapes the really bad times and then it gets even worse and then it finishes but basically, with that kind of worldview, they retreated from the world because there was no there was no incentive to get involved because it's going to get worse. So if that's the promise, it's going to get worse. Don't waste your energy on it. You're hiding away. You're like a spectator of world history, and you say, "Oh, this is turning really bad. Oh, this is turning really bad. Jesus is coming soon." So you have almost this glee and happiness that finally, it's, everything turns to dust. So that's a very negative view. But if you have a if a different understanding of the end times, that you know you're sent out in the authority of Jesus Christ, you are to disciple nations, and that things, you know, they, they can be bad for a season, but God is building his kingdom, and his kingdom is to, going to expand until he returns. That motivates. Do you know, there's, uh, Jesus was actually asked about that, and he says, 
you know, there will be wars and rumors, pestilence and stuff. And then he adds something very interesting. But the end is not yet. Yeah, yeah. Right? So it's like, you know, it's yeah, like, yeah. you think that the wars are going to be the end? Yeah, yeah. No, nah, you're going to have wars. Yeah, yeah. Pestilence? No, it's not the end. It's yeah. like all of these things that, you know, we think are the bad times must be a sign that the end is coming. Yeah. And then it's like, you know, he finishes off and it says, he says, but no, it's like the gospel's going to go out to all the nations. Yes. So yes. that picks up that thing about Matthew going yeah. to all the nations, baptizing them, yeah. making disciples. And I've got to say that when Edgar and I have a time when we're just flying a kite, you know, dreaming about whatever it is, I think for both of us, this, uh, this heart um, uh, longing to disciple nations or, and particularly, you know, going to say, for instance, where uh, the Reformation took place in terms of, yeah, you know, yeah, that, yeah. The, oh, you mean Germany? Germany. <laughs> yeah, going He's back, going, going back and, and, and bringing revival <laughs> to them. It's like, you know, you yeah, sort yeah. of think, wouldn't it be great to actually have an influence on, on nations, you know? Yeah. And, uh, so anyway, but the thing is that, you know, the gospel has got a purpose. It's got to yeah. go out and reach people. Uh, but I think it's such a key, like, um, it really matters how you think about the yeah. times and yeah. the future. If you're getting, if it's all getting just worse and bad, like we had that this morning at the prayer meeting. Did you listen to it? Like, you know, there was, ah, uh, you know, we're no, we're no longer going back to pre-COVID days. It's just going to get worse and worse and worse. Like, how deflating is that? <laughs> like, you know, bury myself straight away. But like, if, if you believe, you know, Jesus still reigns and he has a saving will for this earth and our commission is to disciple nations, he wouldn't give us the task if it wasn't possible. That's if right. He, if yeah. he wasn't going to do it. So, I don't know when Jesus returns. I'm interested in, in stuff, but like, I know I've got a job to do and I'm f hopeful that it will be fulfilled. Do you know, just as, a, as that uh, little conclusion here, yes. I often say that um, when those people who are looking for dates and signs and, yeah, okay, yeah. now we've got it figured out, now we're fixing a time for God and we're going to keep God at it. And guess what? 100% of the time, the day comes and the day goes. They go all wrong, hey. In the Every right. single one of them. We're still here. Yeah. So. I don't think that God's uh, idea is for us to be preoccupied. When will it be? It's like, you know, no one's yeah. going to know. Only the Father in heaven. Jesus even says, I don't even know. Yeah. So when God says it will happen, then it will happen. Yes. But in the meantime, what are we to do? And I think yeah. Peter, I th oh, I'll have to look at that reference, but I think first Peter was talking about the destruction of the world under fire. The first one was yeah, by yeah, flood. Yeah. The second one was by fire. And then he says, because you know this, what kind of people ought we to be? What are we are supposed yeah, to yeah, do? Yeah. And it goes back to the same thing. Look after the orphans, you know, look, yeah, you know, yeah. compassion. Yeah. Do you stuff that really matters uh, in the here and now with the people yeah, in need? Yeah, yeah. Don't just sit down on, you know, saying, oh, well, the end is going to come. Yeah, I just yeah. might as well wait. Uh, no, get busy doing yeah, stuff yeah, that really yeah. matters to the people around yeah, you. Yeah. Yeah. And when you know this is only temporary, it's going to end. You're actually free from it. You don't have to be attached to the world. Yeah. You can actually show love. Yeah. Anyway, ah. I'm glad you're preaching it. Yeah. So it's good. Hey, be encouraged. Have a great day. Okay, bye. Bye.